We're continuing our series of to-do lists for every FBS team in the Lone Star State. And today, our eyes go west, way west, we keep west. going west, basically to New Mexico, basically past New Mexico to Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> the UTEP Miners. Last year, I don't think it was any secret that in probably your last year of having Aaron Jones, you knew that going in, and having him healthy, a 4-8 and eight season is not exactly what they had in mind. Nope. Sean, Sean Kugler now enters his fifth season as the UTEP coach, and at some point, he's going to have to win. I feel like this is a... I feel like we, we talk a lot about like how Kevin Sumlin's on the hot seat, right? Right. Maybe Cliff Kingsbury's on the hot seat right. at Tech. Um, we don't ever talk about Sean Kugler being on the hot seat at UTEP, but you know what? He's got to win. Yeah. Right now, um, unfortunately, I don't have it. I don't, I don't have it up. Go, go away. Go away, pop-up. <laughs> um, pop-ups are the worst. Pop-ups are the worst. I mean, right now, he's he's been in, in his four seasons, he's been to one bowl. He, I believe he went 2-10, and 7-6, and, six, yep. and then 5-7, and 4-8. It's been a one pull. That's not going to cut it. The six and six needs to be the the bar out there. Yeah. They need to be able to make a pull, especially yeah. in Conference USA, which I think has been down the past couple of years. Yes. So and, it's, and especially way, the, in Conference USA West. Conference USA West, but the problem now is it's getting better. It that's the, the timing is really bad. Unfortunately for them, I believe that they may have missed their window. I think so because they are because that was that was where they needed to strike was with Aaron Jones probably the last two years. I understand 2015, he got hurt. That really hurt them. Right. Totally get it. Can't blame Sean Kugler for that. Yep. But last year, that's a problem. And 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 if another one like that and you wonder if the if the the quote unquote natives will get restless out there. Right. In El Paso. But we want to be positive. We want to look at 2017 at the UTEP Miners and say, what are the things they need to do to win in 2017? And to win, I think we mean make a bowl. There's three things that I identified, and as I mentioned off the top, I think they're all really equal in their importance. <coughs> oh, jeez. Number one, <coughs> find a bell cow. Goes without saying, right? So this seems, this seems obvious. The UTEP offense is based large, it's based around the running game, and Sean Kugler has been lucky enough that for two of his, that for two of his four seasons, he's had a tremendous bell cow in Aaron Jones. Yeah. Uh, he, you know, he, he broke out as a freshman, his sophomore year was cut short due to injury, and then in the junior last year. Now he's with the Green Bay Packers, so who's your bell cow? Well, we thought we knew who it was going to be. It looked like Quadriaz Wadley, Q Wadley from Kennedale, was the heir apparent to right. Aaron Jones. Well, Q Wadley, it's it's really funny. Sean Kugler had a quote after the spring game that it was like, "Well, we basically escaped spring. Uh, we basically escaped uh, spring uh, without any injuries, with the exception of Q Wadley, which is like saying, but other than that, Mrs. Lincoln, how was the play?" <laughs> Like, that's the injury, okay? Because now all of a sudden it's cast into yeah. doubt. Now, we may know there are a couple different options. They have a lot of options, okay? Walter Don Jr., yep. okay, from Mesquite Poteet. He was fantastic. He's also a bit smallish, so he's probably not an every down back. Yeah. Ronald DeWatt from Wolferth Friendship, which, by the way, we'll talk about that coaching change tomorrow. Ronald DeWatt, that's an option, too. Kevin Dove from El Campo. Yep. That's another option. T.K. Powell is a guy who was injured during the spring, but they they expect him to be back in the fall. And they're going to add Josh Fields from El Paso Americas. They have a lot of options. Those are all guys we like. Those are all yeah. guys we like. Those yeah. are all guys we've spoken we very high highly of on this show. Awesome. Yeah. To me, it is imperative that UTEP has one of those guys grab the brass ring. Right. One of those guys reach out and say, this is my job. I'm the number one running back. And Q Wadley, sorry about you, but this is my job, and when you get healthy, you got to beat me out for right. it. To me, UTEP absolutely needs one of those guys to step up. I have questions about Dawn's durability just because of his size. 
A Watt probably fits the mold the best, although Kevin Dove, who is technically a fullback right. at, um, at El Campo, Kevin Dove can take a beating as well. I don't know a ton about T.K. Powell. And then Josh Fields is a freshman, so you right. can't really necessarily say that's the guy. To me, those are the critical element. That's one critical element. They have to find a guy who can grab the job of the number one and be the bell cow. Number two, ramp up the splash plays. It's easy to say that UTEP's defense was bad last year. Right. Just look at the numbers. Sure. Their defense was bad. They were like 108th in the nation in, in points allowed per game. I want to say it was something bad. Right? Not, not, not a real breaking news. What made the defense bad was that they almost never came up with a big moment, mm-hmm. a big play, a game-changing moment, a drive-ending moment, the kind of thing that shifts things around. They almost never did. Let's call them splash plays, right? Plays that make a splash. Splash plays include sacks, just tackles for loss, interceptions and forced mm-hmm. fumbles. You can't necessarily um, you can't necessarily control whether or not you recover the fumble. But if you force enough fumbles, you're going to, you know, the law of averages says you will get enough, right? Here's how they ranked in those departments. They were 115th in sack percentage. Ooh. They were 102nd in interception percentage, just six interceptions all year. Mm. They were 121st in forced fumbles. Okay, they, they forced four fumbles all year. Boy. Their opponents fumbled a total of 11 times, but they only forced four of them. That's a huge difference. But the one that really stuck out to me, they were 126 in tackles for loss. Oof, they were third is, to last in the right. nation in tackles for loss. I didn't realize it was that bad. Which means that your opponent is consistently, consistently playing ahead of the chains. Yep. You've got to put them behind schedule, especially when you are a defense that has a couple guys we like, Alvin yeah. Jones among them. Yeah. There's a couple of guys we really like on this on this defense, but you've got to put yourself in a position to start making plays. Yeah. You know why they only picked off six passes last year? Because they're facing third and three every time. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. And why would Plus, you why I would mean, you throw it into coverage? You have to force the defense or the the opposing offense yeah. behind the behind the chains. And to me, that was such. I, I was trying to think, like, I was running through the numbers, trying to figure out, like, why exactly was this defense so bad? Right. And then, boom! Yeah. They never put them behind the chains. And it's it's especially imperative when you have an offense that's a ball that's a clock control offense, exactly. right? If you can't qu- score quickly, you need to get the other defense off the field so you can own the ball. So this is this is a staggering statistic, okay? Um, like I said, they're tied for 126th in the nation in, in tackles for loss. The leader in the the leader in the nation, unsurprisingly, last year was Clemson, the national champions. Mm-hmm. They made a hundred. Uh, they made a hundred and thirty tackles for loss. From a rate perspective per game, Arkansas State had a hundred and twenty five. Right? They had nine point six tackles for loss per game. It's really good. Yeah. Right. UTEP had forty six. <laughs> a third. Ugh. The amount Ugh. that can't that can't happen. That is Ugh. not sustainable. They need to start wreaking havoc in the backfield. That's one. That's number two. Oy. And number three, cash in on play action. We talked about this yesterday with Tech. I'm not asking Tech to change their offense. Right. I'm asking them to be better when they throw the changeup. I'm not asking you right. to throw your fastball less. Yeah. I'm asking your changeup to be better. Right. UTEP's a similar fashion. Reversed. Right. They want to run the ball. They want to establish the run. They last year. They last year, as far as rushing per, uh, percentage of plays that they ran the ball, they were um, they were uh, you know in the in the you know they they ran the they actually didn't run the ball a ton as right. as much as they usually have, but I think because they were chasing, but they were a, they were a run first team. There's no doubt about that. Okay. The problem is, and that's great. That's great when you run the ball. For two reasons. One, because if you're good at it, you're getting four, five, six yep. yards a chunk. Two, it sets up play action for you. You look at who the best play action teams in America were last year. Okay? 
If you look at the top five, okay, okay. Army ran the ball the most. Army, Air Force, Navy were the top three yeah. as far as um, no huge surprises. As there, far as uh, right? ru- uh, running the ball last year, okay. The service academies, they were also number one, number three, and number four in yards per completion. Interesting. When they played, when they did play action, they'd set it up. It was yeah. it was jackpot. Yeah. Okay. UTEP, on the other hand, UTEP was, you know, middle of the road. They they, they ran the ball 46% of the time. Mm-hmm. Or, I'm sorry, they ran the ball 50, uh, 56% of the time. But the problem is that when they threw the ball, they were 104th in the nation in yards per completion. Mm. That's not going to cut it. Yeah, that's not even halfway no. there. No. Yeah. no, 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 no. They have to cash in. When they when they run the play action, when, they, when he pulls that ball back, yeah. It needs to be bingo. Yep. It needs to be a big play, and they've got guys that can do it. Eddie Senegal, I really think, is in for a breakout year. But they've got to cash in on play action. Those are my three things that UTEP has to do in 2017 succeed. 